name is Ted Gagan, and I'm the writer and director of Brooklyn 45. Hi, it's Alex Winter. I'm at the Saturn Award. Hi, I'm Zach Allegan. Hi, I am Kyler Lee. Of course, my name is Sholo Maridueña, Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes. I'm Dean Devlin. It's Ben Browder from Farscape and Stargate SG-1 and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Doctor Who and a few other things. Yeah, I'm Rock Neil Bannon, uh, creator of Farscape. So excited to be here on the red carpet and just to be at the Saturns. I've been a big fan of them since the day I was born and I am over the moon. Excited about basically any horror movies that are coming out. I live and breathe them. They're, it's my favorite genre in the whole wide world. Um, I'm a big fan of Shudder who produced my new film. Um, so I usually just tune into Shutter to see whatever the new stuff is there and, and dive right in. Over the past year, um, one of my biggest, most entertaining surprises was I really loved The Pope's Exorcist um, with Russell Crowe. Uh, I, I thought the concept sounded so silly and I went into it and was just absolutely blown away by how much fun it was. And it has weirdly become a recommendation from the past year is if you want to watch Russell Crowe on a tiny Vespa fighting demons, it is, it is the most fun you're going to have. Um, look, the sci-fi and fantasy fans are the best. They're the most enthusiastic and most loyal. It's kind of how we got the third Bill and Ted movie made was the fans demanded it. Uh, and that showed the studio that there was an audience for it. So, I mean, I have immense gratitude to that fan base. But even, you know, for other movies, you can just see how invested they get in them, which is why you do this, right? So it's, it's very affirming if you're on the other side of the camera. Gone back to your younger self and be like, they're still gonna be Bill. They would not, if I'd have said that to myself, like as I started Bill and Ted 1, I definitely would not have believed me, not for a second. And there's so much science fiction and fantasy now that's exploding. Is there anything that you want to see more of or that you haven't seen yet? Um, I mean, I don't know. There's, you know, look at who's here tonight. You know, like you have James Cameron is here, Chris Nolan. There's so much incredible talent here, and I just think that the boundaries of technology and story are getting pushed further and further every year. But it's super exciting. I'm always excited to see what Nolan's gonna do next. Our fans, the Bill and Ted fans, the Lost Boys fans, they're the very, very best fans in the world. They've carried with us for decades. And I think I feel as loyal to them as they seem to feel to us. It is pretty amazing being here. I, my first time here was 1991, that's 33 years ago. So the fact, that this is still going and bigger than ever is just is super exciting. I'm that you are incredibly lucky enough to be in a franchise like Gremlins. You just have to uh, you just thank the fates and your lucky stars that you managed to get a role that is has a lot of longevity. And for some reason, the Gremlin franchise has stuck around for a very long time. My guess is it's probably the seasonality now, the fact it shows every Christmas. It's kind of like the new Wizard of Oz. Not that we're as good as Wizard of Oz, but it's the same type of thing where you see it every year. So yeah, it's fantastic. No. Nope. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. I love, sci-fi is like my favorite genre. Um, I'm grateful that I got to be part of it. Um, and there's so many people that like, I keep wanting to see. I heard Keanu Reeves is here. I'm losing my mind. I'm gonna lose my mind. I couldn't be more grateful to, to be part of this, this genre. It's the most amazing fan base. And, and I mean, they're here right now and it's freezing in LA, which is like raining and freezing in LA. It's so weird. You know what? I absolutely, it wasn't underrated, but everything everywhere all at once was mind blowing. I absolutely, I didn't know what was happening at any given moment. And I loved it. A movie, like anything, I'll tell you what, I say it all the time. That's not a knife. And people will be like, what? I'm like, crocodile dundee. It was on, the most fun I've ever had working on anything in my whole life. Um, and it really was due in part to not only Angel, the director, who helped protect uh, not only myself, but our ancestors with this project. Um, and everyone in front of the camera who uh, didn't get to chat about it because of the strike. And everyone behind the camera on the crew um, who helped me get through my first movie. So um, to think that today it could be nominated or, or recognized or anything to that sort is an honor. Um, and I just can't wait to um, you know, scream their names from the mountaintops. The family unit on set was so fantastic. Um, so I can't wait uh, to see when the next time all of us will be able to, to share that love with the rest of the world. I know, and my own grandma's here today. So, so from from Nana on screen to Abuela in real life, um, it's it's 
it feels like art's imitating life in some ways. Other movies that have been underrated that haven't been talked about that you want to share right now, shout out to share the love. Society of the Snow, uh, just peeped that one, fantastic. Our uh, second unit director, our DP, was the DP on that film, so I, I want to shout that one out. Um, I was a big fan of, of The Iron Claw as well. Uh, loved that one. Radical with Eugenio Derbez was fantastic as well. Um, but, you know, ev I'm, everything that got nominated got nominated for a reason. So, so I want to celebrate all of them as well. I'm a new fan of Stargate. Oh, fantastic. So, so crazy that I get to meet you. So, how does it feel to know that there's still new fans like me coming into the Stargate franchise? It's incredible. It was 30 years ago that I went to my first Saturn Awards when, when Stargate won Best Picture. And we've, I've tried to come every year since. Uh, I find this to be a magical uh, academy. These are people who celebrate the things fans really love, the things I love to be a part of. And it's the least pretentious award show in the world. So it, it, it's a very special thing to be here. Is it something that you would love to see more of or that you haven't seen yet? Well, you know, I, I think that we're in a great time where science fiction, you can get the fun stuff like like Strange New Worlds, but you can get very intense stuff like Silo. You know, I, I just think we're, we're living in a, a renaissance of science fiction, horror and fantasy, and I just hope that it continues, and I hope that the fans embrace it, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to have my little window in that. Do you feel like you fans like me coming into something like Mars being so amazing? I I think it's very exciting to see a new generation finding it. I, I, had the, I had the privilege of watching the last few episodes of it during the pandemic with my daughter and her best friend. And they came up to the house for the last eight because we're all in lockdown. And it was absolutely fascinating seeing people in their 20s absolutely geeking out on the show. Uh, look, there's there's so much good stuff out there and it, that uh, you can't actually keep up with all of it. We used to be able to keep up with all of it, uh, but now it's there. You go, oh, I haven't seen Silo yet. I gotta watch Silo. Oh yeah, actually pretty good. Oh, I gotta finish up. Uh, I, I gotta finish up the, the Last of Us. Oh, I gotta finish up uh, for All Mankind. Oh, I need to get back and watch Severance. There's so much of it, and, and, and a lot of it is, is just a pleasure to watch and to have out there. Uh, to the audience, thank you for watching. I hope that we continue to make things that inspire you and that you love. How do you feel about new fans like me coming into Farscape? That's what's so exciting is that people seem to be finding it, uh, even though we've, it's been 25 years, we're just we're celebrating the 25th anniversary this year. And uh, yeah, no, new fans, and uh, people introduce it to their kids. So people that weren't even born when the show was on um, are are discovering it, and and it, they, according to them, it seems to hold up very very well. So no, uh, obviously couldn't be more proud. It's uh, it's it's gratifying because it was a struggle to get Farscape on the air, as I like to say. You know, uh, uh, TV had to come up with a network. Uh, the Sci-Fi Channel that was dedicated to Sci-Fi in order for us to get on the air. And now, if you look at you know the, uh, the streaming world, and even you know it's like everything's uh, very genre-oriented. So, uh, and as a fan myself, I'm just wildly excited that there's that much uh, you know genre to watch. Uh, that's that's a toughie because there's just so much of it. Um, uh, not really. I just I just. You know, uh, just wallow in it because it's there's just so much and so much really good quality sci-fi, which is really exciting. 100%, uh, it's the characters, and that's the thing I'm most proud of because I'm I'm very proud of the obviously the, the look of the show, and we had the the Jim Henson Company to do the animatronics, which is something that still isn't done in in in, uh, in television. Uh, but when you talk to people, the thing that always hooks them is the characters, and they may have different favorites. But it's the relationship between um, John Crichton and Aaron Sun that is, at, for most people, is at the center of it, and that's just incredibly gratifying to me because I wanted to create a, a just kind of a, a version of the ultimate romance, and we kind of did that. So I'm very proud of that.